Hello guys and welcome, my name is Phoenix, and today we're going to talk about the final episode of Kisser Dur Dwarven Martial Arts. We're going to talk about how to create a character in the adventure mode, what is the best character in my opinion, and how to train your skills before you are ready to take bigger and tougher enemies. So let's start with the demigod. So you press plus to go to demigod level, because that's already something you want to start. If you want to be super badass martial artist, you want something good. Let's select a dwarf. So any dwarf from any dwarven civilization, doesn't matter which one you pick. Basically pick something that will feed your story, so you want to go for something like that. I'm going to go and create a dwarf quickly here from a line torch, because why not. Now, we're going to focus on skills, so let me show you what we need. Okay, so that's how we're going to go with the attributes. I'm going for a superior strength, superior agility, agility even, uh, above average toughness. I don't put too much points in toughness. I rely on armor and on not being hit. A high endurance, when you run out of endurance, is disaster when you are on arm, so you want to have as much endurance as possible. I'm going for high spatial sense and high uh, kinesthetic sense. They both are responsible for your fighting skills and they both will help you out. So I like them high. Surprisingly, against what the wiki, wiki says, I don't put that many points in the willpower, because the weaker enemies we're going to fight, they're not going to hit us. Basically, we are going to be way too good in dodging and uh, blocking attacks to be hit. So the willpower will not prevent us from uh, collapsing on the floor. And the bigger enemies, if they hit us, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you collapse. If you lose both legs, it doesn't matter that you go unconscious. <laughs> you, you're still going to die even if you remain conscious. So that's how we're going to create that. What I'm putting here in the skills, we're going to go for a novice observer, adequate uh, swimmer, so it's two points in swimmer, and then proficient, uh, five points in each, proficient shield user, armor, armor user, and dodger. They are very, very important that you select them. Shield user obviously will help you block, block more often. Armor user makes you faster in the armor and makes the armor rely better as well. So normally when you are attacked and you have armor on you, you can get bruised through the armor or you can just glance away. The higher the armor you have, the more likely the shots are to glance away from your armor. Uh, Dodger obviously self-explanatory allows you to dodge things away. And proficient in striker because we'll be striking a lot. I don't put any point in wrestler because wrestler is probably the easiest skill ever to learn. And I didn't put any points in Biter because it's very situational and yes, it's amazing and you can use it really good. But it's not something you will be using all the time. So there we're going to go and create a character. So in here you can select any character you want. It doesn't really matter that much what you create. Choose whatever fits your story. That doesn't matter at all. So let's just go with it. Any character here. And again, when you press F, you can... Randomize character as well, again, if you want to. It still has no influence on the game. And in here, you can as well select different skills. What I like to do, I like to go in F menu and go down somewhere down here. I like increasing fearness, fearless, because hey, you're a martial artist, you fight Hydra naked pretty much, you want to be fearless. And lights brawls, I like that. I put it about around here. Liking brawls. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be fighting a lot, so why not invest in something that will help you out? In these menus here, I put uh, training skills quite important, and martial prowess quite important as well, because you'll be using that a lot, so as well you can give yourself a little boost to stay in focus. The rest you can customize the way you want with your character, so do whatever you want that fits your story that you're playing. In here today, we're going to just focus on, on how to train your character. So obviously when you start, you're going to start with a copper spear usually and a large copper dagger in here. Sometimes you will have a shield, sometimes you will not. So you want to obtain the shield at some reasonable rate here quickly. For now, we're going to see quickly the map. So you press M, uh, capital T and then M in here. We're going to look for places to train. So as you can see in here already, we have a river to our left. And that's the first skill you're going to be training a lot. There is a little bit of a grind involved in the game, especially in the beginning stages of the game. But what you want to do is we're going to go in here 
I'm going to jump in the river. That's why you took two points in it. So you can swim and you're not going to drown. I'm going to jump in it. And what you want, what I want you to do is to swim up and down. Look at your speed. It's very, very slow now. But as you keep swimming, your swimming skills will improve. But in addition to that, your superior strength and superior agility will improve. When we go to our skills in here, let me show you here. Let me open that up. Strength relies on swimming. Agility relies on swimming. Toughness is kind of interesting one. It relies on swimming one while drowning. It's kind of unconfirmed, but you can test that. And you can, you can try to do that. If you swim under the bridges a lot, that may raise your toughness. So that's something you want to do. Again, endurance relies on swimming. Willpower relies on swimming. Spatial sense relies on swimming. And kinesthetic sense relies on swimming. So every single skill that you're going to be using relies on swimming. Swimming is the best exercise as much as in real life as in Dwarf Fortress. So all you want to do is to swim up and down the rivers as much as possible. So find yourself a good one. If you find yourself a lake, it's even better. And just keep swimming. That's all you do. If it's occasionally got out, just get back in the water and keep swimming, yes. And look at that, I just swam for a little bit. It changed from superior to super dwarven. So our strength and agility increased. Our high endurance and all that will increase slowly. It increases slower. Mostly strength and agility relies on it the most. But that's something that will be increasing for you. So you want to swim a lot. You want to swim until you're a legendary swimmer. It's not difficult to do. It's about one day grind to do so. Don't know why I minimize the game. So that's the first skill you want to be training in gaming here. Next one, you want to pick up yourself a few stones from the floor. You want to walk around until you find something when you press G and get the small chaired rock. Pick up few. So GB, GB, a lot until your speed starts to slow down. So I have few. And then what you're going to be doing? You're going to be throwing them. You can either, there are, there are two ways of doing it. You can throw them at trees and that will increase your skills as well when you go in here. Your thrower is starting to be doubling. Let's throw it a few, few more times. T and C, and you can either have to throw it at three, at three, you can throw it wherever. It pretty much doesn't matter. Three is kind of sensible target because you know what you are aiming for. You can even start stand closer if you want to, just so it doesn't fly anywhere. You don't want your ammunition to accidentally kill somebody. So either throw it at three or throw it at the wall even better. And when you go in here, your thrower is increasing and your skills in here will increase as well with it. And again, throwing is used in quite a few of them, so they will increase all the skills that you are using in the fight. And at the end of the day, throwing is quite useful skill to have. You can use the weapons, as we showed in the techniques, to throw at enemies, or you can use it just to soften up the bigger enemies as they come at you, or if there is too many enemies, or if somebody is faster than you, you can stop them by throwing the rocks at them. So that's, there are two skills that you want to be using. The next one you want to be using is climbing. Climbing is not easy to grind. So that's the problem with climbing. You have to press H and then you have to kind of maneuver around this tree and just keep moving. Takes you a while. And then eventually you'll get to the top of the tree and that's the problem. So then you want to press A, uh, H and hold down the tree branches and go down. And you want to go down as much as possible. And you keep doing that. And yes, we land on the ground suddenly, so sometimes you will get injured. So if something like that happens, don't worry about it. If you go to sleep for a day from any accidents, you will get better quickly and nothing, nothing bad will happen to you. So as you can see in here, we're going quickly for a sleep. And that's something that you want to be doing. So when we go in our Z menu, you are all back up, reasonably quickly fixed. Give your hunger and uh, first level control because they are responsible for your skills as well. They will kind of dip a little bit if you are low on them. So you want to be doing that a lot. You want to keep control of them both. 
So we're going to drink a little bit of water and then we're going to show you how to train the most important skill that you have. So there are two skills you want to be training, obviously, as we've spoken, uh, spoken uh, before. You want to be training wrestling that we're going to be using a lot and you want to be training striking. Striking is more difficult than wrestling to train, but they're both quite possible. So we're going to go into the wild wilderness until we find some enemy that we can fight. So go somewhere decent, but don't go attacking anyone super difficult yet. Like, found a layer, don't go to the layer yet. Don't, under no circumstances, go there, even what, what is it now. That's probably going to be a Etin or a Cyclop. Don't go to anything like that. You are not ready. You have to be ready for a fight before you take it. So let me quickly find some enemy and I will come back to you guys and explain you what we're doing with the enemy when we find it. Also, the other skills you want to be training as you walk around is press S, capital S, and the small S for sneaking. So then you sneak around and that increases few of your skills that you're going to be using in the fight. And also press capital key, K, to track. You want to track and sneak at all times, pretty much up a part of fighting. The only time when you don't do it is when you fight. Okay, here is the example. We have in here, I think it's an eagle. Eagle is a reasonable enemy. It will try to attack you, so you will have to dodge around a little bit. But it's not strong enough to kill you straight away. So you're going to go for it, you're going to press Shift A and select Alt Y to confirm the attack and you're going to wrestle it. So you're going to grab it with whatever arm you will have, let's say you're going to grab it with the left hand and grab it wherever on the body you want. Then press a capital C, Shift C and select your preferences here. You want to select your current attack preference to close combat. D to move around and C to dodge. That's the attacks you want to have selected. And then just keep pressing the arrow at the enemy. So as you can see, the eagle will try to attack you and you can fight it. So what you do, you pick out a small animal like that. Sometimes it's an eagle, sometimes it's something else and you keep fighting them and wrestling them. Look at how quickly wrestling went up. Let me find something else that will not escape that quickly and we'll deal with that. Another eagle in here is, so we can go and grab it with the left hand. Let's grab it, wing, if we can find the wing. Right wing, we're going to grab it. Okay, then we're going to press it here. And yes, we're going to go and wrestle again. And you want to pinch right wing, wing, so we can go and kind of damage that a little bit. And wait for it. And awesome, the archer has been torn and he won't be able to fly, so then you fight him. Like that, you basically keep moving into his style, whilst having your uh, skills selected here. So as you can see, the eagle is trying to run away, but you can fight it. And he's trying to attack you as well, so that's important thing, that he's attacking you, so your dodging will be training. Every now and then he will land successful attack, that you will have to dodge away. But you can do quite a lot, especially that he's keep attacking you, so he's still conscious. The only thing you can't do, you can't beat somebody unconscious and train them. The punch bag will not work, they actually have to be alive. But as you injure his wing, look at that. Eventually he will die because you will do so much damage to him. Because every now and then you will throw him, he will slam into obstacles and get injured and weaker. Make sure that when you get here, overexerted, you don't want to be fighting any more than that. You want to withdraw yourself from the fight. And then we're going to wait for it. An eagle dies. You are tired, but that's fine. And let's see how much we improved. So look at that. Proficient fighter. You became from that straight away. Proficient fighter. Just by doing this. You became here. A skilled wrestler. So just one animal. That you beat like that and you became a skilled wrestler. You want to go back to walking and then you want to find yourself another animal and do the same thing. Ravens are not bad either. So you can go again again. Wrestle. I'll start with the wing because wing is always good to start with. And then you want to pinch it so they lose the wing. And then you keep attacking at them. And look at that. We'll see how quickly it will go until we kill this animal. 
Okay, so I became overexerted again with the fight with this animal, but look at that. I am a great wrestler, great, great fighter. Fighter helps with every single skill you have and is really quickly trained. So fighter will help you with punching, with striking, with attacking with weapons. Every single skill you have, fighter helps. So it's really great skill to have there. And it's trained so easily that you don't have to do anything with it. Now you can just wait here a little bit. And basically keep doing what I did in here. You don't want to do too much of it. You can you can do it in the fight as well. If you have a weaker enemy and you know that you're going to win, you can wrestle them. But basically this little start will help you a lot in the future fight. Then what you want to do, you want to move on from this world. You want to go quickly and go to some sort of dwarf fortress. So you're going to go press T. And you're going to look for fortress. Press Q. If you play with the legend mode, you can lose le legend modes. If you don't, just keep looking around until you find a fortress. Usually in the mountain here. So like in here, there is a dwarf fortress. You want to go there as quickly as possible. So you go there and let me do there, guys. Okay, so that's the entrance to the fortress in here. You want to go down the stairs. You can go as quickly as you want here. And what we're looking for, we're looking for busy rooms. So you see not this one, but there are a few different rooms that will be full of people that you want. Like this one here. That's quite busy room. Let's speed our speed a little bit. Just to jog in so we can move a little bit faster than everybody else. You want to move around here and eventually you will find a room full of equipment. Okay, eventually you will find a room that looks like this. You will have plenty of equipment laying on the floor. So what you want to do, you want to go through that and pick up anything. Don't worry about the items in here that says that you are not supposed to be wearing them. The money, you can steal it and nobody cares. What you want to do is complete yourself at least the iron armor. So you want to go pick it up and put it on yourself. When you are having all this complete, you want to go out eventually. Just go through all of that. If what you want to create for yourself is a good set of armor, if what you want is at least a breastplate, you want two or even three male shields that I pick up. You want some gravers on your legs. You want the iron high boots. You want a gloves. And the gunlets. And you want the iron helmet and as many hoods as you can put on the head. The head is the most important part of your body that you want to protect. So you want to put as many hoods as you can. And any, sh any shield, preferably the steel one or iron one, but any will do for now. And when you are ready with that, you want to leave the fortress eventually. And you want to go somewhere somewhere and find some, somebody like a crocodile or somebody like that. I'm not going to do that now because it takes a little bit to find them, but you want to find some good enemy that can, that it can actually attack you. So you want to pick a fight with somebody that is really strong, but is not strong enough to kill you. So somebody like crocodile, like some sort of, uh, I don't know, lion-ish creature. And you want to start a fight with them. And then when you start the fight, what you want to start pressing, after you punch them once, only once, not to kill them, not to injure them too much, you want to start pressing the dot. What dot does, it skips one turn. So as you can see, people here are moving around as you press the dot. And in the, when, you, when you start the fight, that's what's going to happen. You're going to press the dot, and your character will be avoiding attacks from the enemy. So when you have everything selected, as I have in here, so you move around to dodge, and you dodge away attacks. Everything works perfect here. Or you can change it later. When you, when you want to change your shield training, you're going to change your stand the ground as a dodge attack preferences. So then you will block attacks rather than dodge them. But for now, you want to increase your dodging to maximum so you can easily avoid attacks and you never are being caught with charge. Because charge is the most devastating attack for any martial artist because it will knock you down to the floor. And as you are knocked to the floor, you cannot really fight that effectively and you are in a lot of trouble. So you want to increase your dodging as much as possible. So that's the skill you want to do. Then what you want to do, as you fight these enemies, you want to punch them. And there are ways of punching people without killing them that much. So you will pick up the enemy, let's say this guy is my enemy, he's not in here, but let's, for sake of that, do it. You're going to strike him, and you want to strike them in some non-vital body parts, preferably with no bones. So you want to keep punching the guy, 
in the lower body. Lower body is usually one of the best to punch because there isn't really that many bones there and there isn't really any vital organs there that will kill you. So you're going to go with B, you're going to go with U for a quick, faster strike, but it's not as powerful. You don't want to do too much damage. You don't want to destroy the organs there. You don't want to suddenly accidentally break the spine. You just want to keep punching the person with the weakest attack you can get that will not break the bones so they don't go unconscious and that will not do any significant damage. So lower body is a really good one to punch. You can go for places like nose and ears and things like that as well. You can go for impossible attacks because it all counts. It all counts. So like in here, let's have a look. My character now has Proficient Striker, no attacks here. That's fine. We're going to pick up this guy. We're going to go for the most impossible attack ever. Let's find something like that. Like we're going to go for a right ear. Even if we hit it, it doesn't matter because it's just right ear. We're going to go for that. We're going to go for as well you as a quick attack and strike eight. Okay. Strike right ear behind with a small chair rock. Apparently I used the rock accidentally. Let's try it again. Strike. Going again for a right ear, which is D. Make sure that you don't have anything in your weapon, so you want to punch C and punch. Left hand tearing apart the cartridges, throwing the llama cloak. That's fine. That's okay. We're going to stand up here. We're going to press Z. And let's see how our skills increases. So let's do it again. So basically you want to keep doing that. That is not a significant attack. Look at this, this dwarf. When we punch him a few times, I broke a few cartridges on his head. Nothing is wrong with it. Left and right ear. He's not even bleeding. When we look at him, nothing really bad is happening to him. We just ruined his ears, but nothing significant to his life happens. So the same with other enemies. We keep doing the attacks that do the least possible damage to cause some sort of level of devastation of their bodies but without actually damaging them properly so you kill them too fast so you want to have one enemy being used for a lot and that's how you fight it guys that's that's all there is to training your martial arts so again let's go through the skills that you have in here you have uh, shield user arrow user and double thrower train throwing throw at an enemy you see if somebody's flying away like without the eagle and he was flying away Keep throwing at him, that will help you a little bit. And that's it guys. Thank you everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed the series as much as I enjoy making it. And please stay on the channel so we can play more Dwarf Fortress together. And let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. Do you want to see a um, Kisandur martial arts adventure play? And if that's something you want to see, let me know. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.